Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 6 of Direwolf20's Dyson Sphere Program Let's Play series, uh, where I've come up with a slightly different approach to how I want to do my motors. I told you I was going to think about this between episodes, and I decided how about instead of tapping into the main bus line that we're using for probably future crafts, what we could do, because I know I need to connect to the iron line that's here. And basically my problem was like, how do I bring these guys together with the iron that's here without just putting my motor makers here in case I wanna expand on these guys later? And I said, well, what if we just have dedicated magnetic coils and gears for the motors here, right? So what I could do uh, and, and, and go with me on this is something like this, right? So we're gonna do this and this and this and this. And then you guys can go here, right? Uh, and then for the iron, for the gears, could go something like that. And then you guys get your iron like so. Right? And how cool does that look? And then all of a sudden, we're making motors. Eh? Eh? Not too shabby. Uh, and then we can connect this dude up like so. Uh, I'm gonna throw a couple stacks of motors in there. And suddenly, we have a nice little motor production line going on. Um, now, now, don't forget, you can definitely be more efficient with your belts. Because there's really no need for this whole line here, right? And I did the same over here with these belts. Uh, so if you're looking to be a little bit more efficient with belts, there's absolutely ways you can pull that off. Um, so this should work out pretty well. And that'll get us our motor production, which for now, we just need to store the motors. But it is, in, in, in the near future, we're going to want to be um, using those motors for some crafts. And we'll figure out what those crafts might be in the future. So that, that looks like a cool way to go about with motor production, right? I think so. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm kicking off red research because I want to focus on getting that going. So in order to get your energy matrix cooking here, we're going to need to combine energized graphite, which we already have, with hydrogen. That seems like a pretty straightforward process. Um, we've got the graphite here, right? So that's easy peasy. Um, what I think I should do is kind of like I've been doing with my other systems, is something like this. Um, and then we can do that. And that should be fine, right? Um, so we've got our energized graphite up here being produced. Not a problem. Like, clearly we're producing enough uh, to meet the demands of our entire base and everything we need out of it. We've got hydrogen production. Remember, I think two episodes ago, we very quickly looked at setting up hydrogen production, right? Um, now what you'll note, and what's very important, is that there are two outputs uh, from the oil refinery. It's the refined oil and the hydrogen. Um, and, and the thing is, is we kind of get uh, two to one refined oil to hydrogen. So yes, we need hydrogen for red research, but we gotta find something to do with refined oil. And there's going to be plenty of things to do with refined oil. And one of the balancing acts you're going to have to do as a player in this game is figure out, you know, what to do with those two components. So is there anything right now uh, that I can unlock? Sulfuric acid is a thing and plastics um, in, in chemical engineering. That might be a thing. Uh, energy matrix. Hooray. Okay. Um, Deuterium fractionation, that is taking hydrogen, getting deuterium from it. So that's actually also using hydrogen. Uh, not going to worry about some of that stuff yet. And I think a lot of the other things here are going to need red cubes. So I really want to focus on red cubes first, because I think that's going to be a big part of, of, of what we're going to have here. Now, a bunch of other stuff is going to become unlocked in the future that, you know, uses things like oil. Um, and refined oil and, and lubricants and all this other stuff. Uh, but for now, we're going to want to kind of plan out our assembly line for these. So one thing for sure, we're probably going to want some more oil refineries. Now, uh, there's a few ways that we can do this, right? We can kind of just do like kind of this guy. And you'll notice that we're starting to get near the poles here and things are starting to get a little bit rotating. 
So as you get closer to the poles on these planets, and this is this is basically the pole right here, um, as you plan out and build buildings, you'll notice that the grid kind of becomes circular. Uh, the whole planet is this way. It's just you don't notice it as much when you're down in the middle of the planet um, rather than down by the poles. For this reason, you'll notice that almost exclusively I'm building left to right here on this planet. And if we look at the planet with, with the poles, you'll notice most of my buildings are going left to right. And the reason for that is that, generally speaking, uh, left to right, your belts will always be pretty much straight. So see how that's nice and straight? Okay, but if you're going, or, le or west to east is probably a better way to describe this than left to right, but if you're going north to south on the poles, um, eventually your belts are gonna get uh, a little bit crooked. Uh, especially if you're not following the, the pole line. So like, here's like a good example. See how the belts get a little bit crooked here? At these junctures, it's just the way it is, okay? Because if you look at the grid lines, um, they start they start shifting a little bit because of the way the, the, the circular aspect of this planet is. It's a sphere, right? It's not a flat cube or a square, it's a sphere. So um, generally speaking, try and build your buildings east to west um and that will allow your belts to be a lot straighter and a lot better it's not the end of the world if you decide to build some things north to south it totally works out you'll just occasionally run into parts where the belts get a little bit funky um and we'll probably see that as the series goes through right um now with these guys there's a few ways we can build this dude right look at that beautiful beautiful loving it um we can I probably don't need you no more if I do that. Cool. Look at that. Nice. Now we can also um, tap onto the other side of this thing. I should really automate the prisms and the plasma dudes so that I don't have to craft those as intermediate steps. I should add that to my auto crafting line. I think it's just glass and what was it um, for components? So prisms is just glass and then the plasma dudes is glass and those electromagnetic doohickeys. We could probably tap into those electromagnetic doohickeys that we have and run them down to our glass line so that we uh, can automate those two components. Probably not a terrible idea. We'll look into doing that in a minute. But right now what I'm going to do is basically let's get this. Why do you want to? Yes, that's what I want. Lack of item. We're still working on it. Replicating. Let's go. Cool. And then we can have our lines come across like this. And like this. And you can go in there. And you can go in there. And then you guys should be, we will copy and paste. So oil refineries, I forget if there's multiple recipes for oil refineries. There's a few machines in this game where there's literally only one recipe that they can do. But most of them have multiples. Um, and then I'm thinking I want the, the oil on the closer belt again. So let's get oil on the closer belt and hydrogen on the further belt. That sound cool? And then we can kind of just, you know expand this out as needed okay now one of the other things that we got access to when we unlock this 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 system we have storage mark ones right and you can absolutely store hydrogen in your storage containers okay but not much not much instead if you want to store liquids what you should be using is the storage tank for two reasons. One, they can hold 10,000 fluids, which is awesome. This has 30 slots, and I forget how high uh, hydrogen stacks, but it's not much. It's definitely not much. Uh, it might be 100, so, I mean, if there's 30 slots and it stacks to 100, you can store 3,000 in a storage container, where the storage tank can store 10,000. Also, storage tanks can stack on top of each other. So let me get a couple more of these bad boys, um, and you'll see... You built a storage tank. Yeah, I did. It is more suitable for storing fluid than the storage. 
Each storage tank can only store one single type of fluid and can be built vertically. However, once it has been removed, all the stored fluid will be devastated. Correct. So don't destroy a fluid tank if you care about the fluid that's inside of it. But the other benefit of the fluid tank is you don't need to use sorters to get fluids in and out. You can connect belts directly to them. Uh, so if we take a look here, we'll see, I can literally just run belts directly into the fluid tank. And there's, there's four sides to it, so you can run fluids in and you can run fluids out. Pretty awesome. And if you wanted to you treat it as a splitter, you could 100% do that as well. Cool. How awesome is that? So we'll be using fluid tanks to store our fluids, and then we're gonna have to basically figure out what we wanna do with refined oil. Um, one of the balancing acts, like I said, is you need to use these resources uh, so that more resources can be produced, right? So if we back stuff refined oil, these machines will stop working. And that's what's happened right now, is we've backstuffed refined oil. We could be producing hydrogen right now, because we've only got 18 of it. And in fact, if I take this refined oil out, he'll go back to making more hydrogen for me. So if we if we let this thing backstuff refined oil, that's going to be a bad time for us, right? And, uh, you know, we don't want to avoid it, because that stuff's going to be useful later. So we're going to want to be very cognizant of not wasting that. And boy, am I low on energetic graphite. I should get some more fuel for my mecha. Because he's going to be very unhappy in a moment. There we go. So let's figure out how we want to, you know, get this going. So for now, uh, we definitely want to run some hydrogen over to here. Tap into our existing lines for uh, graphite. And then kind of figure out what we want to do to make this guy behave himself. So let's figure this out. So let's fill in some land. How cool is that? And we just used 20,000 soil piles to do that. One thing you're gonna rapidly find out is soil piles is like, it sounds like you have a lot, you don't have a lot. You're gonna have, you're gonna have the need to have a lot more. Uh, it's a thing that's just gonna happen. Um, so maybe what I wanna do for you, I might move this to here. Keep those five for me. I'm gonna keep an extra stack, but yeah, keep five stacks in your inventory for me, buddy. Um, and then what I could do is show you guys the splitter. That sounds like a good time. So the splitter is neat. Splitter with four directions. It can split the passing cargo or balance the cargo on multiple conveyor belts. The splitting speed depends on the conveyor belt speed. Use the tap key to switch between different styles and click it to set priorities and filters. Cool. So, few things. Number one, the splitter can split belts. So you can see we've got a blue belt, which is the input, and then we've got two orange belts, which are the outputs. That's because that's the way the belts were running when I piped them in or out of the machine. Okay, so it knows that based on the direction you put the belts in. You can click a belt to prioritize it. So let's say, you know what? My highest priority is power. I want to make sure that it's always prioritized, right? So by clicking on that, it kind of makes it a big circle. That means that this port status has priority. It means that if we need, like, let's say there's like 100 being produced, and this needs 80, and this needs 20, it'll send all 80 to this direction as the highest priority and 20, the remaining 20 will go this way. It might wind up sending all 100 here and zero over to here, right? Um, if you don't filter it, if you right click, it'll go 50 and 50 no matter what needs what, okay? So by pri prioritizing, that's good. You can also set a filter on things here so that if you want to pipe two items in and or you know what else is also used for commonly is if you wanted to have your belts from your um, oil refineries, you could just dump all your hydrogen and oil on one belt and then use a splitter to split it and filter it out, right? So like refined goes north and hydrogen goes south or something like that. So there's a few ways you can use splitters. Um, one other note with splitters, which is super cool, is splitters actually have multiple modes that they can live in and you can change it with tab. So you'll notice on the top right there, it says switch pattern with tab, boom. You can actually have splitters that have two uh, things here like this. So you can come out here, 
And then um, there's there's a way to get out the top belt there. Uh, but basically it's, it's, let's see. Like that. Okay. So that's splitter type number two. And then splitter type number three is like this. Cool. So those are your different types of splitters that you can make. I don't think there's another one unless it's been added since I've last played. Nope, that's about it. Um, splitters are also stackable, I believe. Um, but I don't think... I don't think it's accurate to say that they will connect to each other. Though, a lot of people wanted them to be able to do that. But see, these are two separate splitters. I'm pretty sure if I were to put an item on here. Yeah, see how he's not coming out there? So splitters that are stacked on top of each other don't kind of connect to each other, which is a bit of a bummer. It's a bit of a bummer. Like, I would love it if I could have this do the thing that it looks like I would want it to do. But it doesn't, so oh well, we live. So let's get red research cooking here, and we also have to figure out how we're going to handle... Um, some other stuff here. So I want to I want to be prepared for these guys. Let's plan out how much each one of these can process, right? I'm just going to take this. You can do 15 per minute is what these these processors can handle. Okay? Um I'm just going to destroy this stuff. Oil's kind of infinite. Uh, now, this guy is capable of doing almost 200 per minute, 195. 195 divided by 15 is 13. So we can have 13 oil processors on this line. Assuming that this belt could handle 100, 200, you know, but it definitely can. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's 200 per minute is what it can handle. Um... So yeah, that would be 200 divided by 60 is how many per second the flow is. Because um, belts are, are measured in cargo per second. Um, but actually, so that would be 360 per minute. So the tier 1 belt can absolutely handle the 200 of these. But we would need 13 of these to fully handle all the oil. I don't want to build 13 of these right now. I feel like that's a little unnecessary. Uh, do I have to, like, if I wanted to build 13, would that be a problem? We would definitely need a lot more of these, which we should probably go automate. But I want to kick off red research automation before I automate those things. So let's, temporarily speaking, run uh, what we're going to want to run. So let's do, let's do this. Let's have, for now, I'm just going to pipe this dude like so. Okay, so that all of that makes its way into there. Cool. And then I want this guy to kind of run down here-ish. Maybe it would be cool if he ran down like this. And you can kind of see what happens with the lines when you're running north and south. It's not a big deal, but if you were trying to put a building right here, it would be annoying. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm just saying that would be annoying. So now, what we would want to do is connect this into there, and that should be cool. Okay, and if we wanted to, we could throw... And then you into there, and you into there. Great. And we'll see. Uh, it, it might very quickly turn out that I want at least four or five more of these guys. If that's the case, we'll just deal with the fluid storage thing um, separately. We, we can handle this. This is not a problem that's going to be a big issue for us going forward. It means we'll probably have to rearrange these lines a little bit in the future. But honestly, not a big deal. Now, this is just a temporary solution, by the way, on the storage tank. Like, if you, if you look at what's going to happen, eventually the storage tank will fill up with 10,000 refined oil, which is not going to take very long, by the way. Um, and once that happens, 
then we're going to back stuff and the same problem comes back. So eventually we're going to have to deal with making sure we're using up the refined oil fast enough. But that's a problem for future Dyer. For now, we're just going to be building lots and lots of conveyor belts so that we can kick off Red Research. Okay. And Red Research... Shouldn't be too bad. Mm, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm a little bit concerned about this guy. I don't want to I can solve this if, if I need to expand this. There are solutions if I need to expand this, so I'm gonna say this is fine. But what I'll probably wind up doing, well let's put it let's just move it down a little bit. Let's put it like here-ish. There's no reason to crowd this thing. Okay, so now you're gonna make red cubes for me. That actually might be the wrong spot. Now, I already broke my north-south rule, but for small segments like this, it's not a big deal. Now, these guys need two of each. Okay. So that should be cool. Nice. Red cube production up and running. That is what's up. Now, this guy looks like he's in the way. So let's be prepared to fix that problem. And then basically we want to run this like so. I'm going to need more iron here really quickly. Where's my iron stock up? There it is. That'll get some more crafting going. I really should look into uh, automating the production of belts and whatnot. But you can see what I'm doing here, right? So effectively, I would like to pipe in here and here. Because these fact these research guys need both cubes inside them in order to research. Because most of our research, most of it, is going to need both cubes. So for example, this guy, he needs a hundred blue and a hundred red. Okay? Um so that's gonna be an important you know, dude there. Let's actually look right now at doing high efficiency logistics. So that's going to need four to one blues to reds. That should be fine. Okay. And what this is going to get me is tier two belts, tier three sorters, and a larger storage component, which is awesome. Cool. Now, theoretically, I don't need those there. So I'm going to I guess using inventory items is on. I'm going to uncheck use inventory items. And then that'll give me those back, and that should be cool. All right, that works. Nice. Cool. How good is that? That is not bad. Uh, now, it's also probably a true statement that we're going to want to back stuff a little bit of these. So let's get ready to make that happen. Um, I'm probably going to want to do it like this. There's a little bit of future plan in there. Let's make you just be 10. Yeah, that seems good. We'll make you 10 as well. Oh, are you going to be a nuisance about that and the distancey thing of it? That'll be good. So that way we will um, we'll back stuff this thing nicely, and I think that should be cool. If it, if it turns out that we need more back stuffing, we'll deal with that. Oh, and you should be 10 max. Perfect. All right, cool. 
So how's our logistics system coming along? Not too shabby. Uh, coming right along, you can see the progress bar on the bottom left there. This will get us access to higher and faster speed belts, which will obviously be a benefit for our automation needs. Now, as you can already tell, we're struggling for graphite. That's gonna be a problem very soon. So let's solve that problem right away. I'm going to cover up that oil well. And then what I'm gonna do is something like that. Make a few more of these. We will copy and paste, 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 paste. Uh, we will do this. And ta-da, how cool is that? We've now just doubled our graphite production. Now it's very possible to say, and I really don't need this anymore, is what I'm gonna say. Um, so let's do this and let this empty um, by getting rid of this and this. Hopefully you'll still be able to empty. We might be saturating the belt and you'll struggle to empty. Um, I don't think we need to store coal anymore. So that should make things pretty nice. And hopefully we'll have enough backstuffing to make everybody happy. See how this guy is not getting any fuel? So we've already run into that fuel problem. And that's even with the filter on? Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're going to struggle pretty fast. Now if we really needed to, what we could do is we could adjust the flow of these lines so that we have more of an area up here to do our smelting with. And that's absolutely something we'll probably want to do. Um, maybe once we get Mark II belts, that might be a thing. Hooray, high efficiency logistics, that's cool. So what's involved in making these belts, you ask? Well, we're gonna need electromagnetic turbines, which we haven't quite yet figured out how to make, but we should probably kick that off now. So electromagnetic turbines is a thing. Why is this flashing? It's because we don't have enough power. Uh, power is definitely a problem. Our consumption demand is around 18 or 19, and we're generating 14. So that is a bad time for us all around. Even though all our power plants are now, you know, getting enough power, uh, or getting enough resources, we are definitely not producing enough power because we've got oil processing going now, we've got red cube processing, we've got a lot more happening uh, and that's, you know, obviously going to be a problem for us. So, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a thing. Can I manually fill you? I think I can. Beautiful. So we definitely have to research the, the, the items that we need. And then we're going to want to be auto-crafting them. That'll be huge. And then we'll kind of go from there. Deal? I think that sounds like a plan. Okay. We might want more, yeah, I think we're going to want more coal production. So let's craft another one of these dudes. And do something like that. Beautiful. And that will help saturate that belt and then what i'm going to do as soon as i can craft them i'm going to make this a tier two belt here and i'll show you guys how you can upgrade belts in mine because it's awesome and then what we'll probably want to do is rearrange this a little bit um yeah we're absolutely going to want to rearrange this a little bit I'm probably going to want to do something like this. Can I do it like right now? Yeah, because those belts are in the way, that's probably why. Not a big deal. We can we can we can resolve this. But what I'm thinking I'll wanna do let's do this, this, and this. I'm gonna remove this guy as well. I'm going to copy this whole setup. 
Can I do that? Yes. I'm gonna put it like here. Look at that. Now I unfortunately got rid of the middle belts. So that was foolish of me. Does that work? I think that works. Now, obviously, we are now suddenly demanding a lot more power, uh, which is bad news. Um, what I can do is borrow some of this. And you know what I'm also going to do? Is I'm going to dump the coal that I had in you guys right in here. Now, remember, most of our base is coal-based at this point. So that's clearly a problem. Because we stopped producing enough energetic graphite to meet the needs. But that's okay. We'll manage. How much? Wow, you can hold 100? Okay, cool. This should get me up and running, just to hold me over. How's that look? Pretty good? I mean, it looks good to me. I feel like that's cool. And then what we might want to do... And I'm not saving these blueprints, as you can tell. And then we'll get more... Perfect. Just enough. No fuel. I know. We're working on it, kids. And how's our power situation going to be? In a minute, it should uptick a little bit better. You can see the fuel kind of kicking into all our power plants. And now we're getting better, but still not great. Uh, what we could probably do... Is something like this. And then we just need a little bit more iron. Okay. Three more of these bad boys. So that we can build them. Huzzah! And now if we check our power needs... Aha! Generation has finally overcome consumption. And magnetic levitation technology is done. Perfect! So we're going to want to automate that next episode. But for now, it looks like we're in a better place with this whole setup. Now, ideally, I might be able to real quick show you guys how upgrading belts works. So Mark II belts is basically Mark I belt plus these... Uh, little turbine things. So if we check our components here, um, so buildings mark two belt, you need three mark one belts plus one turbine equals three mark two belts. And these green turbines, electromagnetic turbines, are motors plus electromagnetic coils. So we're going to automate those next episode because boy are you going to need a lot of those, trust me on that, in the future. <coughs> um, and uh yeah that's 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 about the uh, that's uh, that's about the end of that sentence you're gonna need a lot of those okay now what's cool is you can upgrade belts in the same way that you can upgrade um your sorters so how am i on belts i've got about 30 of them so if you hit the upgrade button you can upgrade a single belt at a time that sounds terrible luckily just like with deleting you can upgrade by holding shift and holy cow, look at that. Now, if you don't want to upgrade this belt down here, what you can do is upgrade this junction point. And then when you hold shift, you're going to see that you're upgrading this entire line. 
and suddenly mark two belts all the way down. How cool is that? Now, if you say to yourself, this looks like he's pretty saturated, let's upgrade this junction point and these belts. So now this junction point is Mark II, so we've got two Mark I's going into a Mark II, and this is a Mark II here, and they're all saturating. And what we should have um, is, is, is we should see our arc smelters start down here to start working better. How great is that? Is that cool or what? I think it's cool. I think it looks good. Really, really awesome being able to upgrade belts like that in a whole line. It's super cool. Um, so upgrading is definitely something you're going to be doing a lot as you progress through the game. And uh, trust me when I tell you it's very easy and very convenient to be able to do it like that fast. Cool. However, though, it is wrapping up points. So Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. I'll kind of make sure that these uh, smelters are all behaving themselves. I feel like they should be. I feel like they should be. Yeah, this is all Mark II belts, so that's cool. Um, you know, if we're not producing enough, we can absolutely fix that by just doing this. Right? Um... Yeah, there we go. Now it's cooking. Boom. And a little bit of power. We want to make sure that we're saturating that belt. So you're doing 180 per minute. You're doing 150. And remember, these can do 360 per minute. So we should probably not be saturating tier 1 belts like that. So we should be fine at this point. Our tier two belts will hopefully be saturated. And we may, you know, we may have two, made this too long for tier two belts. If that's the case, then, well, eventually there's tier three belts. We'll deal with it. For now, wrapping up point, double twice on and off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.